Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, let's say Pibitaike. Hope you're all doing good. Today in this video, we'll discuss on how to classify the work centers as part of the production planning module in the process orders. So let's get started. So here in this slide, we can see the sequence of uh, operations being carried out uh, in a uh, shop floor. So uh, it can be a production line or it can be a, a reactor where the activities will happen uh, in the process manufacturing or the discrete manufacturing. So while executing these operations, uh, there can be several work centers which perform the same activity and can be categorized into a particular group. So let's say if we have uh, a reactor, right, so uh, where the blending operations can take place. So in the blending operation, uh, the reactor 1, the reactor 2, 3, 4 and so on. So there are multiple re reactors which can be used uh, in the manufacturing process, right? So on that particular day while releasing the process order, the user should have the ability to check the capacity of the available uh, work center, uh, I mean to say the reactor and based on the availability, he should have a flexibility to choose the uh, reactor by himself while releasing the process order. Right. So in this example, we can see a production line here where the assembly uh, operations are being carried out. And these operations can be executed in four of these machines. Right? We have the machine one, two, three, and four. So and here for each of these machine, we can see the available capacity or the load on the work center. Right? So the machine one has 90% uh, of the load. And whereas the machine two has a 10% load and machine three with 95% and machine four with a 97% load. So these loads are basically categorized on the ongoing uh, production orders or the process orders. So which are actually released uh, on that particular day. So let's say on the current day, when we look at the available uh, resources or the machines, uh, the user has actually identified that the machine two has the available capacity. I mean, this is already loaded with 10% of uh, uh, the overall load on this particular day. So then he should have the ability to uh, replace the existing machine. Uh, I mean to say if the machine one has been assigned into the operation, he should have the flexibility to look at the available capacity and replace the machine one with machine two since it is uh, less overloaded on the current day. Right. So why? Because the other machines uh, which are beyond 90% cannot be utilized based on the required uh, availability or the duration to perform this activity. So let's see how to classify the work centers and how can we uh, actually uh, perform this activity while releasing the process order. Uh, so to perform the classification, we have to follow a few steps. One is the creation of the characteristics which happens in the transaction CT04. And the next one is basically to create a class with the uh, class type as 019, which is basically for the work centers. And the transaction for that is CL01. And then we are going to assign the objects to the class. So the characteristics what we have created earlier are going to be assigned to the class in the transaction CL24N. And once we have completed the setup of the master data, we are going to assign all the combinations into the recipe of that particular product. So let's see how to do this uh, in SAP. So before we do any change, I just would like to go to the uh, creation of the process order in the transaction COR1 and let's try to uh, create one uh, process order of uh, 1000 pieces and we do have some uh, missing parts and that's fine and in the operations we have already defined the resources or the work centers which are basically coming from the master recipe right so Let's say that during the capacity evaluation, uh, it has been identified the resource. I mean, the default resource of reactor is not having enough capacity to perform this activity on the particular day, right? So on this period. So now I should actually replace this work center uh, or the resource based on the availability of the same category. So if I look at the, uh, the work center list, I can see that I have multiple reactors here, right? So the one of the procedure is basically to uh, choose the reactor here uh, with the user himself, right? So this is a manual allocation. But we do have some uh, options in SAP which can be utilized uh, from the standard itself. So let's have a look on that. 
so I'm going to come out of this screen I'm not saving this so let me first uh, show you the characteristics uh, what I've created so in the CT04 I've actually created the characteristic as the work center so in this we are not actually going to assign any values here right so I've not assigned any characteristic values so here in the uh, table reference for the work center we are going to use the standard table crhd with the field name as arbpl so this is one characteristic and the other one is basically uh, the plant right so this is the plant and here i have assigned it with the standard table again t001w and the field name as works so these two characteristics have been created and the next step is basically to create the class so since I have already created the class, I am using CL02 uh, to go and uh, have a look at the class. So the class what I have created is reactor in the class type 019. So 019, it basically stands for the work centers. Right? 019 is the work center class. So just assign the class here and then go to the characteristics. And here we are assigning the characteristics that we have created earlier the work center and the plant so once this class has also been created we just need to save this and the next step is basically to assign the values of these characteristics into the class and that will be done in the transaction cl24n so here uh, i've selected the class as reactor and the class type as 019 and just hit on enter so I've already assigned few characteristics uh, um, into this particular class so it is showing me uh, what is available here so if I just double click here on the uh, I mean on any of these characteristics I can see that uh, on the bottom of the screen the work center I have assigned and also the plant code to which uh, it, it has been uh, mapped with in the same way we are going to categorize all the uh, similar work center categories into one class right into one class as a reactor and then just save the assignment so now once the cl24n uh, or the objects have been assigned to the class the next step is basically to assign the complete setup into the master recipe so for that we are going to use the transaction c202 and i'm going to end the plant and this is my group in which i would like to do the assignment so we can see that I've already defaulted a resource as a reactor in the operations. So in, in order to activate the classification, you just need to select the operation, but not a phase. So make sure that you have not uh, selected the phase Why? because the classification cannot be uh, activated at the phase level, but it can be activated at the operation level. So select the operation and click on the icon that you can see here, a resource selection criteria will be navigated to this particular screen so here we are going to assign the class reactor so just hit on enter and here we are going to assign the values again so I'm going to use all the work centers with the plan combination so I've assigned one work center reactor and I would like to do another first select the work center and click on insert row so that a new row under the work center will be created so I'm going to assign my fourth reactor and do the same way for, for all the available work centers you have in the plant so next I have reactor 3 right so now we have all the work centers uh, that can be classified under the reactor category once we have maintained the master data here and assign the classification values and just save the recipe and you can see that this particular assignment of the work centers and the plan combination to the class reactor is only applicable for the recipe group uh, for the finished product right so we're going to save this so once it has been saved the next step is to create a process order so you can use various methods to create a process order so for now i'm going to use the manual method which is through cvo r1 and enter the quantity thousand pieces and now we are going into the operation so before we go into the classification uh, I would like to show you one uh, criteria here I mean one uh, 
usage of the resource classification in the master data, I mean in the master recipe, we basically have to assign the classification while we release the process order. If the classification is not done, so then the release of the process order uh, cannot take place. Right? So I go to the operations, I choose the uh, operation number here and click on the classification. So now we are assuming that the reactor is not available with the sufficient capacity on this particular day and now the system is going to provide me the next available options that I have already configured as uh, part of the master recipe assignment. So here I have the ability to choose, I mean to look and choose the uh, resources that are available of the same uh, category. So I would like to use uh, reactor 3, so which is uh, having a sufficient capacity. So I just uh, select this and click on choose. Reactor 3 has been assigned over here. right? And then we are going to release the process order. So I'm going to do one more change here uh, in the master recipe. So I go to the classification. So here I'm going to remove the reactor, the default uh, reactor value here. I'm only left with four options, right? So the, the reactor is not part of the classification table anymore now. I'm going to save this change. And now I go to the process order creation again. So by default, based on the master recipe, the resource uh, reactor has been assigned here. Now I'm going to release the process order, release. And you can see that the release has been rejected. And to check the log, I go to uh, the logs for the release. And from here, I can see that the error message says that the reactor in operation 10 does not meet the resource selection criteria or the conditions. So it is always mandatory to have the resource that has been part of the classification table. So since reactor is not part of the classification table, I'm not able to release the order. So if you like to have this resource as part of uh, I mean, uh, the classification table and which is basically defaulted in the master recipe, you also need to add this resource into the uh, classification table in the master recipe. So now in order to release this order, I just need to do the classification again from what is available in the characteristics values. So I'm going to choose the reactor 2, reactor 2 and go to the release. So it's a, a missing part list, it's fine, I'm going to release it. So now here we can see that the status has been changed to release. So that's how the classification is going to work. That's all for today guys, thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also click on the bell icon to receive updates. We'll meet again soon in our next video. Until then, take care, stay safe, stay healthy. Bye-bye.